for the query shows a, an absolutely, and I, I don't think I can even get it to show up, shows a ridiculous, uh, like, who can read that? If you can try to figure out what that query is in the two seconds that the tool ship, the tool tip uh, shows. Um, and then uh, what else? So it, anyway, it's just basically a generally wasteful uh, layout. So if we go back and take a look at the same plan in Plan Explorer, now I've zoomed in a little bit to focus on uh, one side of the plan, but we can see a big difference here. First of all, the layout is not, uh, you know, it's very collapsed. So I can fit more on the screen without scrolling and panning. Um, the first thing you probably notice is color. So we highlight the uh, we highlight the most expensive node in red, and then we scale down. We show the next one in orange, uh, the next one's in yellow, that kind of thing. Uh, the names aren't truncated. There's an option here where I can say don't truncate the names. So I can say full object names. If I want to turn that off to get a, a few more nodes squeezed onto the screen, I can do that. Um, but I like to see the whole object name uh, in case I'm looking for something specific in the plan. You'll notice that cost is on the top. So if I'm looking across a subtree like this, my cost is always in the same place. I don't have to scan around and look because this one has two lines, the cost would be here. And then this one, because it's three lines, the cost would be a little bit further down. It's distracting. It only takes an extra second to spot it. But um, sometimes when you're trying to performance tune a huge performance problem, um, every second counts. Uh, we show the query text up here in the text data pane as it was written. So all of your carriage returns are intact. You don't have to be a magical speed reader to see only when the uh, when the tooltip is active. Um, and you can go and look through all of that. And if you're uh, focusing on I/O, you can change the uh, you can change the uh, the cost the way the cost is represented by right clicking and saying show cost by I.O. So right now they're, they're shown just like Management Studio does. They're shown with CPU and I.O. combined. Now if I want to focus on I.O. like Brent was describing earlier, um, I can switch that. In this specific plan that doesn't show a huge difference, um, but the option is there for you to do that in cases where you do have something that has much higher I.O. Uh, we also show the row counts visibly. In Management Studio, the row counts over these arrows, you kind of have to guess unless you want to sit there and hover over every single one. Um, and figure out, well, how much, how wide does that arrow, how many rows does that, the width of that arrow really mean? In Management Studio, the numbers are right there. Um, and you can also switch from row counts, and change the line widths, and make that data size. So you'll see the thickness of some of those arrows changed, um, and also you see that the uh, row size in terms of bytes are expressed on top of the arrows instead of uh, I'm sorry, the data size in terms of bytes instead of row counts are displayed above the arrows. Uh, one last thing, you can switch to cumulative costs. So instead of seeing the cost per node, if you have a big plan that has, uh, you know, a thousand nodes and 50 of them represent 2% uh, of the overall query, uh, and these are all in various subtrees, it can be very hard to track those down because none of them are going to stand up. They're all 2% of the overall query. Well, if I switch this to cumulative costs, I can quickly follow the blue color to see where my most expensive nodes are. So if I had a bunch of nodes here that were all 2% and one of them was, a, you know, one subtree had uh, several of those nodes, I could see what the most expensive subtree is instead of focusing on the most expensive node. All right, so... What else can we show here? We have several other tabs that are showing information that in Management Studio you'd have to look for in the Properties panel or buried in the XML. Uh, on the Plan Tree tab, we see something here from Brent's list. Um, several operations have much higher actual row counts than estimated row counts. Um, and we even have a little tooltip here and highlight it uh, when the difference is substantial. And we tell you that this could be a problem with uh, statistics for one of the tables or indexes in the query. Um, so you quickly, when you switch to the plan tree tab, you can quickly identify um, any rows or any operations where uh, statistics might be having an adverse effect. 
on the top operations tab, we highlight lookups and scans, and we can also sort by something else on Brent's list, um, high executions. So we have a key lookup here that in the plan, in the, in the visual, the diagram of the plan, it just looks like one operation. But over here on top operations, we can see that that was actually executed 25,000 times. We go to the query columns tab. Again, we highlight things like key lookups. But if we look a little closer, we get a much more digestible list of columns that are missing, missing from the, uh, the index that is being used for the key lookup. So here we have, a, we have a table that has four columns from the index, and then is doing a key lookup against the primary key for five other columns. So in this case, maybe you need to add those columns to the index, or maybe you might consider that they don't need to be in the query. Um, but you can make a decision based on this about what, the, you know, you can easily see what columns are missing from the index. Uh, just another little tip, if you're thinking about adding columns to the key of an index, uh, or as, an, as a key column, or you're thinking about using an include column, scroll over to the right and take a look at the filters column. Um, if, the, if the column in the key lookup is actually being used as a filter, it might not be the best idea to use it as an include column. Now, there are cases where that is perfectly fine, uh, but it just gives you a little bit more guidance there about whether that's the best idea. Uh, and finally, we'll take a look at the parameters tab. Here we have the uh, compiled value and runtime value of all of the parameters that are used in the query. Now, in this case, my compiled value and runtime values are the same. That's good. In some cases, you might see that the compiled value and the runtime values are different. Um, this could mean that your, that your code is being excessively recompiled. It could also mean that uh, you're a victim of parameter sniffing. So that's one way to quickly identify uh, issues like that. The next plan I wanted to take a look at, this is a uh, massive, massive plan. If I wanted to find the most expensive node using Management Studio, I am out of luck. I mean, if I, if I happen to scroll around in here and spot it, then yay for me, but the chances of that happening are pretty slim. Because well, if you, build, if you build by the hour, Aaron, it's not for <laughs> That's true. That's true. I could sit there and scroll, you know, one scroll bar at a time. Uh, but if you look at this plan, like you can't make sense of this plan. There's, there's nothing we can do uh, very easily here without digesting the XML ourselves. If we look at this same plan in Plan Explorer, well, I mean, we can't turn a frog into a prince. You know, we can only do so much. We can only make this, these plans uh, more digestible in terms of visual uh, space. But for something like this, we have the same, we have the same problem. I mean, if I zoom this out to fit or try to pan around, I mean, this is going to take me forever to try and figure out what's going on in this query plan. This is where the power of the statement, statements tree comes up. So up here, this is a, a plan that has a bunch of statements uh, that were captured. And if I wanted to find the most expensive node, I can just sort up here by estimated cost, and boom, in a couple of clicks, I'm down to my most expensive plan across this set of plans. And I can zoom in a little bit here. And here we've got a clustered index delete that represents more than almost 30, almost one third of the cost of this overall plan. So now I can dig in and look at this most expensive operator and work backward from there. So a pretty powerful way to, uh, to zoom right into the most expensive node in a plan that you'd have no hopes of doing so visually. Uh, the next plan is a, a parallel plan, so we've got uh, we've got some parallelism operators here. Someone complained to me that this query was running slowly. Well, there's nothing obvious in any of these uh, operators. What's going on? We've got some parallelism. Parallelism is usually good, right? If we take a look in Plan Explorer, um, we see a slightly different story. So. We can see the, that the, uh, the node is expensive here for the index seek. We've got a pretty expensive sort. That's one of the things that, uh, that Brent uh, told us to look out for. Might not, be, you know, might not be avoidable, but something to look at. Uh, but if we go to the plan tree tab, 
Um, we suddenly see something that in Management Studio is buried away in the properties panel. We actually see the parallel operations and each thread that was involved in an operation and how many rows were processed by that thread. So if we scroll across here, we see for that one very expensive operator, we've got one thread that was doing all the work. One thread processed over four million rows. All of the other threads processed zero. So what's going on here? In some cases, this might be a, a sort spill. Uh, there are several different things that can happen that uh, will lead to uh, parallelism being collapsed to processing on one thread and becoming uh, single-threaded. But in this case, since on this same tab, we also highlight the difference between actual and estimated rows, we can see that, oh, well, the estimate was under 400,000, and the actual was 10 times that, more than 10 times that. So this is clearly something where the person should investigate the statistics on the object um, to see why those estimates are so far off. Uh, the next one is a, a case I'm sure we've all seen. Management Studio can't do math. So we've got a plan here, and it's not uh, overly obvious, but if we look at these nodes, I've got a 62% node, I've got a 16% node, that's 78, 79, 80, 91, 105, 116, 117. How, how is this possible? How is this adding up to more than 100%? Yeah, it worked for me in college. <laughs> and there are more nodes down here that are 10, 11 percent. So clearly this is not adding up to 100 percent. So if you just focus on a node, this is a bad example because we have one node that is clearly the most expensive node, but if you had a bunch of nodes that were showing as 33 percent or 40 percent, you might focus on one or two of them and not realize that SQL Server really thought that that was 40 percent of 200 percent instead of 100 percent. So it can really throw you off and, and mislead you there. Now, Plan Explorer, working from the exact same XML, we can actually do math. So here we have 36%, 9%, and if you, if you step through all of this, you'll see that it does, in fact, add up to 100%. So, next plan. Here we've got a plan, and the, the actual nodes and everything else is not really important. Uh, this is a, a nested view. So this is, a, this is just a simple select star from a view, and what could very well be a table. I have no idea that's a view just by looking at it. And then we have this really complex execution plan down here. We've got all these, uh, all these nodes and operators, and we don't know what's going on. So we could zoom in and, and pan around and try to figure out what all of these things are. If we look at this in Plan Explorer, uh, the most recent builds, I think, uh, I think in February or March, we released a build that has uh, what's called a join diagram. And here we've taken all of the views that are in this view. So this view is actually a query comprised of a view, referencing a view, referencing a view, and it ends up spidering out to all of these base tables. Well, this, these are the base tables that are referenced in that view. So we actually filter everything down, get rid of all the useless view names that don't really help you, and show you exactly which tables are being accessed. If we look at the Query Columns tab, we see another uh, thing that Brent told us to look